Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to learn how to build an automatic return calculator using Excel uh, index match formula. So as you can see here, we have a series of historical dates and a series of past returns. These are calendar year returns for the standard and poor 500. This cell at the top actually is an input cell. As you can see, it's formatted differently. And when I activate it, this becomes a drop-down menu. So I can click on this arrow and I can select another index. When I do so, for example, when I select the Russell 2000, these numbers will also change to reflect the particular return for that index. If I do the same with the DAX, the number will change. And for the Nikkei, obviously the numbers will change as well. In this video, we're gonna learn how to build this drop-down menu and how to build the formulas to have these calculations automated just after the intro. So the first thing to do is to download the price data from Yahoo Finance. This is a quite a straightforward process. I have chosen four indices, but you can pick as many as you want. And also in column G, I have all the dates from January 16 till December 2020. As you can see, uh, although these are formatted uh, in this more intuitive way, this represents the first day of each month. Up until December 2020, where I actually have two dates, I have the first of the month and then I have the 24th of December, which is the date in which I downloaded this information. So now to start building our return calculator, let's type index in cell B3. After we've done that, we can go to the data tab and click on data validation twice. And then in the settings where it says allow, select list. Afterwards, tick the ignore blank and in cell drop down. And then in the data validation in data source, just check the headers that represents your indices. If you click enter and then OK, uh, just like that, we have transformed a simple cell into a drop down menu and you can test it as many times as you want. You will see that it will work. So this was step number one. What we want to do now is to build a formula in cell before that calculates the calendar year return for the S&P 500 and all the other indices and is a formula that we can also drop down. Before we get into that, I just want to give you a reminder of uh, how the formula looks like from a mathematical point of view. The return over any period is just the price at the end of the period divided by the price of the same index at the beginning of the period minus one. So if we want to calculate the return for 2016, we have to take the price in January 17 divided by the price of the same index in January 16 and then subtract one. You will see that between the 1st of Jan 17 uh, back to the 1st of Jan 16, well, exactly 12 months go by, uh, which is one calendar year. Uh, we don't have to worry about dividends because they are included in the price of the index since when you download them from Yahoo Finance, they give you the option of um, downloading total return indices, which are gross of dividends. So how do we translate the mathematical formula into an Excel formula? Well, as we said before, there are two elements which are crucial in the formula, and those are the price for 2016 and the price for January 2017. We're going to use the formula index match in order to extract those two information for every single index in our database. But before we do that, it's just handy to insert a column. I will insert it here to the left of my first index, the standard per 500, and I'm going to call this column year. I'm going to use an Excel formula, which is just equal year, and it takes one argument, which is a date, 
and what it does is extracting the particular year for that date. So if I have the 1st of January 2016, the formula year is just going to return 2016 and then as I go down further I see 2017, 18, etc. We're going to use that uh, in order for Excel to understand exactly what uh, price are we looking for uh, to pull each time. So now without further ado, let's go to B4 and let's start typing our first index match formula. So the first argument for the index function is what we want Excel to return to us. In this case, uh, we want a price. Of course, our end goal is to have a return, but in order to do that, first we have to pull two separate prices. So let's start by trying to pull out um, the price for the standard import 500 on the 1st of January uh, 2016, which is 1940.24. Uh, As I just said, the first argument should be uh, the table where I have all the prices. So starting from cell I2, I'm just going to select all the prices using the a very handy uh, keyboard shortcuts. Then remember to press F4 so that we lock this table so that when we drag the cell down, the reference doesn't change. It stays as an absolute reference. Then just comma. Now the second argument is going to be the match function. Match works as a GPS. So now we're gonna give the coordinates. First, we're gonna tell Excel which row it should search for and it has to be obviously 2016 and we're not going to lock this one so it's going to stay a4 without the dollar sign so that when we drag down the formula uh, 2017 and then 2018 and 19 and 2020 is going to be uh, selected according to which calendar year we're interested in uh, then we need to to tell excel what is the lookup array so essentially so far we said, uh, Excel, I'm looking for a price and note that the row should be 2016. So please search for 2016 in column H because that's where our year is. So we put H2 all the way down to H62 and we F for it because this should be locked. And then we're just gonna put zero uh, there is nothing else than a way to tell Excel, give me an exact reference. Close brackets and then put a comma. Now we have to put the last argument for the index function. And that is going to be another match formula because so far we've only given the coordinates for the row, but not the coordinates for the column. So which column we want the price for? obviously the S&P 500, we're gonna lock that one so that when we drag down, that stays as an absolute reference. Where to search? Well, obviously in cells I1 to L1, which is my headers. I'm gonna put another zero to make sure that Excel picks the exact uh, value I'm looking for. Closing two times the brackets and that's it. You press enter and see what happens now. This formula should give you exactly, it should return exactly uh, 1940.24 uh, because we've said with the index function, uh, please, in my prices table, search for 2016, the first one you find, that's going to be January, and then also search at the top for the column with the standard import 500. So we're giving an objective, that is the first argument, and then we're giving two coordinates, one for the row first, and then one for the column, like a GPS. And as you can see, this worked perfectly. So now we have the price, and that is good, is a good starting point, but obviously we're interested in the calendar year return, and there's clearly something missing now. If you remember the formula, I'm gonna put it here for simplicity, um, well, basically now we just have the denominator in this formula. We just have the price for January 16, 
we need to get the price for January 17 and then subtract one. In order to do so, we're going to use the offset function. But before we go on and input another formula, I highly recommend that you take what we've written so far and you control C it. So copy to your clipboard and then press escape. You're going to thank me later for that. So what we're trying to do here is being able to grab the price in January 17. Not only in January 17, but in January 2018, 19, 20, because the formula to really work has to be universal, no matter where we are. So it's like we're interested in this other price, 2278.87. That is our new target. You see it in yellow. And this was our preview target, which was the price in January 2016. Now, we will try to reference the price in January 17, starting with the price in January 16. We're going to do that because no matter the calendar year, there's always going to be 12 months between those two dates. So there's always going to be 12 rows between our initial price and our target price at the end. There's always going to be 12 rows between our numerator and denominator. And that's why we need the offset function, because the offset function works with positions. I have previously made a video on the offset function and how to use it to build an automatic fact sheet, but I'm just going to give you a quick review in case you haven't seen this formula before. The offset formula takes five arguments. The first one is the origin or the starting point. Then the other input is how many rows do we have to travel from that starting point? Then how many columns do we have to travel to get to our target cell or target range? And the last two arguments are exactly that. It tells me the dimension of the target range. It could be a group of cells. In our case, it's just one single cell. So to translate it to what we're actually looking forward to achieve here, our starting point is January 2016. Then we want to travel always uh, 12 rows down. We also want to travel zero columns because we're happy to stay in the same columns of the origin because that's the column of my index, the S&P 500. And then uh, as far as the dimensions of the target range are concerned, we're just going to put one and one because we only want one single cell. So let's translate that into, um, into Excel with the uh, actual syntax for the function to work. We're going to type offset, then we're going to open the bracket and we're going to use our previous index match match formula as our starting point, as our origin, because that, uh, that formula is returning nothing else than my initial price. Remember, January 2016, that 1940.24. So we're going to leave it there. Then with a comma, remember, now we have to tell Excel how many cells down we want to travel. That's 12 cells down. How many columns we want to travel? Zero columns. And then we have to give the dimensions of the range. Uh, it's going to be one one because we're only after one cell, one price per cell. So we close the bracket and that's great. So now we're referencing exactly the price that we wanted. But it seems like we have lost now the price in January 2016, right? It's like before we only had the denominator and now we only have the numerator. But remember that the denominator is actually in your clipboard if you followed my advice and you copied before. So now we just have to add one slash and we have to control V or paste it. And then we have to subtract the one as easy as that. Let's format this as a percentage number we're going to get a return for that year of 17.5%. Now, the beauty of this formula 
is that since we have fixed, uh, thanks to F4 or the dollar signs, all the relevant variables, when we drag down the formula, uh, we're going to have exactly what we want. We're going to get exactly the calendar year returns for that particular index. Since the index can be changed, I'm going to format it as an input formula. When we activate it, we can um, select another index. And if you do so, you will see that the numbers change all the time. They are picking exactly what we wanted them to extract. And that's it for today. We have built an automatic return calendar year calculator for as many indices as we want, as many years back as we want in a matter of 10 minutes. I hope that you enjoyed this video, that you found it useful. Uh, if that's the case, uh, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. I hope to see you guys very soon. Have a great day.